Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create wooden clocks using the Arduino, the matrix display, the real time clock module, and of course, this wooden enclosure. For that, I will be using a laser cutter. This one is from a company called Ateaser, a -A and they are sponsor of today's video. And they were kind enough to send me this laser cutter and an engraver for testing. So thank you, Ateaser. This is a diode laser, and those are usually known for low power, but this is not the case here. This laser has power output of 36 watts, and that's quite a lot actually. I have this already assembled, but let me show you those individual steps. I believe there are like 12 different steps, and those were very easy to follow. It was mainly just putting those pieces together, then tightening up the screws and connecting the cables. And actually the step 12 is no step at all, because it only says installation complete. You also get this short user's guide, but that has all the necessary information that you need to know. You can use this laser either with the software called Lightburn or Laser GRBL, and so this manual covers both applications. You will find out how to set the air assist and also the autofocusing feature, because in order to get the best results, the distance between the laser and the material should be 8 mm. And you can use this tool, which is just a piece of metal with a thickness of 8 mm, and you just place it between the laser head and the material and then use the screw on the top to adjust the distance or you can just enable the autofocusing feature and then you don't have to use this at all. You will also find a small USB stick that you can connect to the laser cutter. I was hoping there would be some test files but that wasn't the case. This laser cutter has a lot of safety features and the keys is one of them. You cannot start it without the keys. And of course you have the safety goggles which you should definitely wear if you are operating the laser. I want to talk about one more feature and that's this module. It's called Air Assist and it's an air pump. It has a small knob which you can use to set how much air you want to blow. And it's sucking the air from the bottom of the module. And you connect it to a small hose that goes directly to the laser head. You also need to enable the Air Assist in the software, which again is described in the manual. And so this hose is directly connected to the laser head. And if you use it, you should get cleaner cuts. So let's start it off and you see that without the keys the power button does nothing. So you have to first unlock it with the keys and then you can start it. There is one more interesting feature and that's this built-in touchscreen. You can use it to enable or disable some safety features like the tilt detection and the flame detection. But it could be also used to engrave or cut files from the USB stick. It only has limited functions but you can still use it to operate the laser without being connected to the PC. What I found interesting about this screen is that this is just a standard HDMI screen. So I'm just wondering if I can use a different one or perhaps this one for a different project. Yeah, not quite sure yet. Anyway, it also attaches magnetically to the main body. So let's finally cut something. I will be using this honeycap panel for cutting to not destroy my table. And I have some spare wood pieces laying around which I will be using for cutting. Unfortunately, they are quite small, so I have to be very precise while placing the designs. And speaking of designs, it might be time to create one. I have measured the size of this matrix display module to be 129 by 32 mm. So I will start the light burn application and select the rectangle tool and draw a new rectangle. And then up here, I will change the size to be 129 by 32 mm. Let's zoom in a little bit and this will be the hole for the actual display. But I also want this outer area, so I'll just copy this rectangle one more time and increase the width by 20 mm as well as the height. And then select both and align it vertically and horizontally. I want this outer part to have rounded corners, so I'll select the radius tool, set to 10 mm and then click all those four individual corners, like so. And I think that's enough for the basic shape. Now before we start cutting, I want to autofocus the laser head. And we can do that by creating a new custom command by going into the console tab and then creating any of those buttons and right clicking. And for example, this one, I'll rename it to autofocus. And for the macro content, you should insert ESP500 in the square brackets, click the OK button and then click this button. And if everything is connected, the laser head will go up and down multiple times and then set the correct position, which is again 8 millimeters from the material. Let's wait a few more seconds until it reaches the final position. And now it's set. In order to position the piece of wood correctly, you can click this frame button and the laser head will move around the area where it will be cutting. And as you can see right now, I've slightly repositioned the wood to make sure that the design will end up on the correct position. So at this point, it's time to cut. In the cut slash layer step, I've increased the number of passes to 3 and increased the power all the way to 100% and decreased the speed to only 10 mm per second and then click the start button. So what you see right now is a real time cutting speed.
and now it's 10 times faster. The cutting took around 3 minutes of time, and as you can see it looks quite nice. Later on I've increased the distance between the honeycomb and my table, and that helped with those burn marks on the bottom side. So here is the display placed inside this enclosure and it fits very nicely. So let's cut the same piece one more time, so we have also the enclosure for the PCB. This time I've lowered the speed and only used two passes. That said, I don't think it made any big difference as for the appearance. So now we have two pieces, one for the display and one for the PCB. And even when we are missing the top cover for the display, I think it's time to move to the Arduino part. Now, usually I would use Arduino Uno, but there is no space for Uno in here, so I will use a different Arduino board, and that's the Arduino Micro. I have even smaller board, this one is Arduino Mini, but that one unfortunately doesn't have the USB connector. So for the convenience reasons, I will use this one, the Arduino Micro. I will not be starting from scratch, but from my older YouTube video called Arduino Plus Matrix Display. You should definitely watch it if you haven't seen it already, but for now I'm interested in the code. And not only that, if I open the details for the video, I have the link for the Walkway simulation. So Walkway is a free online Arduino emulator running in the browser. And if I click the play button, I can test it. So if I click this button, it will increase the value. And you can see that I'm using Arduino Uno to grab the matrix display and I'm displaying some numbers on it, actually being animated. So that's very close to, to what we want to do and that it's displaying current time on the display. So let's just quickly change the sketch to show something like time. And we don't need most of the stuff. We only need to initialize the UHG2 library and then we need to clear the buffer, set the font and then draw the string using the draw string function and send the buffer to the display. So let me quickly delete the rest of the code. And we are left with only few lines of code. Now for the UHG2 draw string function, let's set the X position to 0 and the Y position to 8 because this is based on the baseline, so it will be the bottom of the display. And for the actual string, let's actually show something that looks like a time. For example, 1, 2, column, 3, 4 and restart the simulation. Actually, before I do so, let me stop it. And we don't need this button and this switch, we only need the display being connected. And so as I restart the simulation, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4 being displayed on the display, but it's very small. Now this might be an advantage if you want to also show the seconds, so I can type in column 5, 6 and that should still be visible, actually we still have a little bit of space in here, but I would like to only show the hours and minutes in some bolder font, and if I scroll up there is actually a link to the UHG2 fonts, so let me just open it and find some bigger and bolder font. And because the height of the display is 8 pixels, I will look for the section with the 8 pixel height fonts, and I think that some of those bald ones look nice, so for example this UHG2 font T011B. Now the TF, TR, TE and so on, those are just different versions of the font. If I open it, you can see that the TF is a full font, the TR is reduced and the TN is just numbers. And I think that in our case having only the numbers is sufficient. So let's use this font, I will go back to our sketch and change the font to a different one. Actually I will create a copy just so I can keep the old font in case I would need to display more digits. For now let's use this font T. 11 btn change the strength to 1, 2, 3, 4 and restart the simulation. And sure enough, now the display time is much bigger. Now there is a little bit of space on the right side and not too much space on the left side, so let's just move the exposition to 2 pixels and now the digits are more centered. Before testing this on the real display, let's add some kind of animation, for example the blinking column in between the digits, and let's do this in the worst possible way, just because I will delete it in a minute. I will move the set font outside our drawing loop, so there is only clear buffer, draw string and send buffer, and after I do this I will wait a half a second by calling this delay function set to 500 milliseconds, and then copy it one more time, but this time I will display a string being 1, 2, space, 3, 4. And it looks like that something is happening, so that's nice. So let's try the same sketch on our Arduino and the matrix display. Let's copy the code into the Arduino IDE. And if you have never used the UHG2 library, you have to go to sketch, include library, manage libraries, type in UHG2 and install the library. After that, make sure that the board is set to the Arduino micro and correct port. And then just click the upload button.
Now it's time to connect the display to the board and you can see that on the walkway sketch I was using pins 10, 11 and 12. And if I take a closer look at the Arduino micro board, we can also see that we have those pins 10, 11 and 12 on the corner of the board. So I will use the same pins, which means that the clock goes to pin 11, data goes to pin 12 and the chip selector CS goes to pin 10. Since the micro board is very small, it's probably easier to open the pin out because we also need to connect the power supply, so 5 volts and ground, and those are those two pins. And so once everything is connected, we should see a blinking time. So let's move to the next step, and that's displaying the correct time instead of some predefined hard-coded string. For that we will need some real-time clock module, this one is called DS1307, and there's actually a good reason why I'm using this specific module. And that's because it's also supported on the walkway emulator. And not only that, there is also an example that I can open and run and it will print the current date and time and we can also see the connection. So it's using the I2C connection, the SCL serial clock connected to pin A5, SDA connected to pin A4 and then 5 volts and ground for the power supply. So let's try to merge this sketch with the real time clock with our sketch with the display matrix module. We will start by adding this module by stopping the simulation, clicking this plus button and typing DS1307, move it down here and connect it the same way, so the SCL serial clock goes to pin A5, you can see it's already highlighted, the SDA serial data goes to pin A4, and then of course 5 volts goes also to 5 volts and ground goes to ground. Let's jump to the original sketch and copy the code. We need to include the library and we also want to include this initialization. We will not be showing any days of week, so I don't need this array, and I don't need to print those values using the serial port, but I do need to start the RTC by calling RTC begin, so I'll copy this piece of code and paste it in the setup function, and of course delete the serial prints. And then inside the loop I want to read the current time and the date, so calling the RTC now function. Now we are interested in the minutes and hours, so I'll copy this one for a reference, and I want to create a string that will include hours and minutes. For that let's create a new variable that will be the array of characters and let's call this time string with enough characters maybe 10 should be enough and then i will use the sprintf function to add the hours the column symbol and the minutes into our string so our string is called time string and we want to add one integer value then the column and then the second integer value so the first integer value is now hour and the second one is now minute so this should hopefully join the hours minutes and the column symbol into our time string Let's only keep one of those drawing sections and instead of drawing 1, 2, 3, 4, let's draw our time string instead. I will also increase the delay to 1 second and restart the simulation. And you can see that there is a problem because we haven't included the RTC library. So I have to go to libraries, click this plus icon and type in RTC lib and click this item. And hopefully now it should be working. And that seems to be the case, but it's kind of strange because it's showing 10 column 0 instead of showing 0, 0, and that's because we are just using this value of 0 to display it, but we want to show 2 digits all the time. Thankfully that could be easily fixed in the sprintf function by typing 0, 2 before the D letter, which means that I want to use zeros to have at least 2 digits. So now instead of showing just 3, we see 0, 3. So I think it's time to also use this sketch on the real Arduino, and same as last time, I will copy the code and paste it into Arduino IDE. And same as in the walkway sketch, we have to make sure that we include the library. And there are many different RTC libraries to choose from, I'm using the one from Adafruit. We can upload the sketch to the Arduino board, but we will not see anything because we don't have the RTC module connected to the Arduino board yet. On the walkway sketch with the Arduino Uno, we were using the pins A4 and A5 for the I2C connection. There are actually two more pins up here, so those are also I2C connection pins. But for the Arduino Micro, we need to find those pins. And we can see that the SDA is pin D2 and the SCL is pin D3. So let's connect the SDA to D2 and SCL to D3 and ground to ground and suddenly we don't have any available pin for the power supply because we are already using this pin 5 volts for the display. Thankfully we can fix this as well. If I jump back to the walkway simulation and click the pause button, you will see that most of the pins on the Arduino board are set to inputs in the floating state, which means that the value is not defined. So what we can do is we can change it and set some of those pins to be output. And we do it by calling the function pin mode, where we specify the pin number, for example pin number 4, and set it to either input or output. So in our case I'll set it to output, and then I will call the digital write, and again for our pin 4, 
Let's set this to high state. So if I restart the simulation and pause it again, you will see that now the pin 4 is set to high, which means that there is 5 volts in there, which means that I can now use this pin to provide a power supply for our RTC module. So instead of connecting the 5 volt from the RTC to the 5 volt here, I can just connect it to pin number 4 as well. So let's just connect it to pin number 4. And if I restart this again, I should see the very same looking design. So let's do the same with our Arduino microboard. Again, copy this code into the Arduino IDE and then upload it to the board. And we see another surprise here, and that's the time being displayed as a 000, which kind of makes sense because the RTC module doesn't really know what time it is. It just keeps increasing the seconds, minutes and hours. So if you want to show the correct time, we need to first set the correct time. And inside the Vokwit sketch, if I open the documentation for the RTC module, it says that the simulated RTC module is automatically initialized to the current system time, but that's obviously not the case for our real RTC module. But thankfully there is a way how to do that. If I open the RTC library on the GitHub and open some example, there is the example of calling the RTC adjust function, and that will set the time and date of the RTC module to the time that the sketch was compiled. So let's just copy this piece of code into our sketch in the Arduino ID in the setup function. And when we upload this to the Arduino board now, we should finally see the correct time. And since this seems to be working, let's try to finalize our case. Because what I want to do is to make this display invisible, meaning if nothing is being lit, I want to show some kind of a wood. But obviously there is only a certain thickness of the wood that you can shine the light through. I mean the LEDs are very bright for this display, but still we need a very thin piece of wood. And I was able to get very thin slices of wood from the furniture store. They are thin almost like a paper. And I was able to get three different types of wood. And just because I don't know much about woods and trees, let's just call those yellow, red and brown. And not only they are thin, but they are also not very flat. And as you can see, if I put them down on the table, it will not be possible to cut those. So I did get those plastic fixing pins. And you can just push those into the honeycomb and secure some piece of paper or in my case the wood in place. So I think it's time to do some more cutting. Now I wanted to save some time so I've decided to cut four pieces at the same time but that wasn't the best idea. And that's because after cutting the piece was also bending. So as the laser head was moving around it accidentally also cut this piece as well. Thankfully the cutting was very fast but let me still fast forward a few seconds. So here are the finished pieces and they look very nice. So let's cut the same pieces also from the other types of woods. Now you might have noticed that there is an LED bar on the laser head. It shows the current power usage. Not quite sure how much helpful it is, but it surely looks nice. So this is the second type of wood. Let's also try the last one. And this red one is probably the thinnest. That said, I don't think that I have any favorite. They all look very nice. It's more about, about how it fits on the rest of the enclosure. In the beginning, I also wanted to put it on the sides, but I think I will only keep it on the front. So I think it's time to assemble everything together. So here is how it looks like when I just overlay the piece of wood over the display itself. Here is the red one. Here is the second one, which I call the brown one. And here is the last one, that one is the yellow one. As mentioned already, the display is so bright that even if you put two pieces over each other, you will still be able to see those LEDs. So here is the one combination, and here is also the second combination, but I will not use those. I think having just one layer should be sufficient. If it shines too much, I can always lower the brightness in the coat. Now I believe that on the back of the wood slice is the heat activated glue, but I was scared to apply the heat on the display itself, so I just used the regular glue instead. And so here you can see the finished piece, and I really like how it turns out. Obviously you can do a lot more stuff with this matrix display, like showing all kinds of animations or using a different font, because since we are using the U8G2 library to draw stuff on this display, we can choose from a lot of different predefined fonts. But that's something perhaps for the next time. For now, let's call it a day. I hope you've learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. As always, if you open the details for this video, there will be a lot of links and one of them will lead to GitHub where you will find all the source files for today's project. And there will be also a link to the Walkway project so you can run this sketch in the browser without the need to have the real Arduino. And of course a link to the used laser engraver. So once again, my big thanks go to Ateaser for providing me this laser cutter. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.